Hi everyone and welcome to the lightning talk for phenology of two interdependent traits in migratory to birds in response to climate change. This talk comes from work that I, um, Nadia Christensen, and some colleagues at Lund University in Sweden did. Consider a migratory bird such as the pied flycatcher. It migrates from Africa to Europe for the breeding season. During the breeding season, it must complete a series of tasks in order to be successful for reproduction for that um, season. On arrival, it must acquire a nest hole and acquire a mate. It then spends some time gathering resources towards egg laying, such as calcium, which can be acquired from um, the, the shells of snails. It lays eggs, the nestlings hatch, and the nestlings feed on caterpillars in the forest. This process during the breeding season must be timed such that the time of the peak nestling food demand matches a peak in the caterpillar abundance in the um, forests in Europe. The success of the bird at each activity relates to the phenological traits, which are its arrival time and its hatching time. The arrival time is a trade-off between survival and territory competition. So the birds want to arrive early enough that they're able to outcompete the other birds to acquire a nest hole and acquire a mate, but not so early that they hit the harsh early season weather, um, which carries a mortality risk and risk of low food. After the birds have arrived, um, they spend a time of gathering resources towards egg laying, and the length of this pre-laying period determines the hatching success. There is a period, um, we've taken a fixed incubation period, and the success of fledging their nestlings is determined by how well the timing of the laying and of the hatching is set to match the peak in the caterpillar um, food abundance in the forest. The purpose of this study was to create a model that describes fitness of the birds as a function of phenology, as a function of the arrival time and the hatching time. We can use adaptive dynamics, which is a mathematical framework and a, a set of modelling tools, to find the evolutionary endpoints of the phenological traits. We're also interested in a climate change scenario. If there's a shift um, in the early season warming, or if there's a shift in the timing of the caterpillar peak, what will happen to the pressures of selection upon the birds, and how will that change the evolutionary endpoint for the arrival time and the hatching time traits? The modelling technique is probably best explained by way of an example. So consider a scenario where we've started with an optimal match to the food peak. So the birds arrive at time Y1. This is their pre-laying period. They lay the eggs at this point. Here's the incubation period and we've set the hatching date so that it corresponds to the optimal hatching date that would maximise the fledging rate with respect to um, nestlings feeding on the caterpillars in the forest. We can also think of this in terms of the fitness landscape itself. So on this axis, I've got the arrival trait, the arrival date, and here we've got the pre-laying period on this axis. And I've set it up so that the fitness landscape with this curve has the population's traits sitting right at the peak of the fitness landscape. Now what would happen if we have, for instance, a climate change scenario in which there's a shift in the caterpillar peak such that the date of optimal hatching time shifts forward in time like this? What this does is it causes a deformation in the fitness landscape so that now the population with its arrival date and pre-laying period here is no longer occupying the peak in the fitness landscape. In other words, this population can now be invaded by other birds with um, an alternative strategy in this red region here. Through a process of invasion of mutant strategies and replacement, the population's traits will move up the fitness landscape to a new evolutionary endpoint, a peak in the fitness landscape. And so this is what's depicted here. In this particular case, the shift in the phenological traits involved both the arrival time and the hatching time moving forward in time. 
and so we're interested in asking the question, well under what circumstances would we expect to see the arrival date shift or the hatching date shift or both of them together? In order to model the system, we took a set of minimal assumptions for each fitness component. And these assumptions are based upon what we know about various migratory bird species and sort of generalities that are true for many of the species that we're interested in. The first assumption was made was that territory competition, which I've depicted here as PE, has a negative relationship with the arrival date and a negative relationship with the population size. So what's this saying? It's saying that if a bird arrives a little bit later than the other birds, it has a lower chance of acquiring a territory. And likewise, if there are more birds that it's competing against, it has a lower chance of acquiring a territory. Survival, in contrast, has a positive relationship with the arrival date. Early in the season, it's cold, it warms up, and so the later you arrive in the season, the better your chances are of surviving the weather and gathering enough resources to keep yourself alive. The pre-laying period has a positive relationship. The, sorry, the hatching success has a positive relationship with the pre-laying period. So the longer that the bird has available to it to gather resources such as calcium from snail shells, the better quality the eggs that it will produce and so the higher the hatching success rate will be. Finally, it's assumed that the fledging and recruitment success is determined by how well the hatching date matches the optimal hatching date. And so these two assumptions here are describing the shape of the curve, which is peak shaped, a hump shaped curve in time. So we took these minimal assumptions and we used the adaptive dynamics framework to find expressions for the evolutionary endpoints. I've given an example here in the figure of the kinds of results that we got, but this is for a specific parameter set. And actually, because our assumptions were so general, the um, results that I'll be discussing here are true for any model that conforms to these general assumptions. So how to read the figure? On the x-axis is the optimal hatching date. So in our previous example, we had the caterpillar peak moving forward in time. And so that would represent a movement from the right to the left along this x-axis. On the y-axis, we have the various phenological traits over here. So we have the arrival date as the purple line. This region here is the pre-laying period. Here's the laying date, an incubation period, and a hatching date. The hatching date matches the optimal hatching date along this line. And where it deviates from it, we've got this black region here, which is typically known as the mismatch. Above the graph, I've also plotted the population size. The first analytic result was that if the caterpillar peak was late, so if we're in this region here, the hatching date will match the caterpillar peak, will match the optimal hatching date, which matches the caterpillar peak. And the arrival date will be independent of the hatch date. So as the peak, say, moves forward or backward in time here, there's no change in the arrival date. What will happen instead is that the pre-laying period will change and the hatching date will continue to conform to the optimal hatching date that corresponds to matching the caterpillar peak. However, if the caterpillar peak is early, so we're in this region here, then the egg resource gathering time, the pre-laying period, becomes constrained. You end up with a trade-off between um, gathering enough resources to gather eggs, um, the survival probability in the early season, and also matching the optimal hatching date. So as we move the caterpillar peak earlier here, the hatching date starts to mismatch the optimal hatching date, and we end up with a mismatch region here. And at the same time, the mismatch causes a population decline. These predicted patterns of arrival date and hatching date response match well to biologists' intuitions and also do a good job of matching some of the empirical observations. I'll give you one example of um, an empirical observation here, but there are a few more in the paper and in the other talks. Pied and collared flycatchers breed in the forests of Erland and Gotland, and the collared flycatchers tend to reside in deciduous areas and the pied flycatchers in coniferous areas.
The caterpillar peak is earlier in the deciduous areas than the coniferous areas, yet the two species arrive at approximately the same time. Resource synchrony, the synchronisation between the nestling's peak food demand and the peak in the caterpillar abundance in the forest, is obtained by the collared flight catchers simply waiting longer before they lay their eggs. With respect to the model, we can think about it in terms of being in this region of the parameter space here. So here's a forest with an early optimal hatching date and one with a later optimal hatching date and the birds arrive at approximately the same time. The pre-laying period however is longer for those with a later optimal hatching date and resource synchrony is obtained in that way. The model does a good job of providing predictions that compare well with biologists' intuitions. However, it also has some surprises in store for us. One intuition that we might have is that an advance in the caterpillar peak should cause the pre-laying period to shrink, which should put selective pressure for advanced arrival date, which is shown in this figure on the left here. However, we've found with our model that in certain cases, for certain scenarios, this is not the case. On the right hand side here we see that as we advance the optimal hatching date, so as we're advancing this caterpillar peak, the arrival date is responding by becoming later. This is an unintuitive result, however it does follow logically and mathematically from these minimal assumptions that we've made which are based upon what we know to be true in general for migratory birds. In short, the arrival date is a compromise between survival and competition. However, mismatch causes population decline and a lower population causes weaker competition, which means that the selective force for earlier arrival is weaker. And in certain, cer certain circumstances, this can cause the arrival date to become later. One possibility arising from this is that there have been a few observations of um, migratory species responding to climate by delaying their arrival date is thought to be a statistical artefact. However, this is also a possibility that it's happening because of this mechanism. In summary, um, this work is interesting because this is the first time that both of the phenological traits, arrival date and hatching date, and the interdependence between them has been modelled together. We're very much hoping that it will inspire other models for interdependent phenological traits and also generate new hypotheses um, about migratory birds and how these two traits relate and how they will respond to climate change. Because the model was built out of these very minimal assumptions, we've got a very general model. And this general model can be used, one model, to explain many scenarios. So in the previous example, we had a comparison between species, between the pied and collared flycatchers. However, there are other comparisons that can be made. For example, the difference between early versus late season warming, or the difference in response between species that have flexibility in their pre-laying period versus those whose timetables are more constrained, perhaps those that are longer distance migrants. There's also a possibility to look more deeply into this issue of the um, phenology of the egg laying resource and the effect that that has particularly on the arrival date. These minimal assumptions formalised common knowledge that we have about the migratory birds. It mathematically formalised what is known about them and also the commonly used kind of reasoning that's, that you find for explanations of various empirical results. It also gave us an opportunity to take these assumptions to their logical, their mathematical conclusions, and in one case with a particularly surprising result. This work was performed at the Theoretical Population Ecology and Evolution Group at Lund University. My co-authors are Jakob Johansson, Jürgen Rieper and Niklas Jonsin. And if you'd like to find out more about it, um, details are in a paper, Phenology of Two Interdependent Traits in Migratory Birds in Response to Climate Change in Proceedings of the Royal Society B. You can visit my website at nadia.org and if you're interested in downloading the code and modelling some of these birds yourself, you can find it at github.com slash nadiapk.